Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. So, have you ever been on a velocity banking video on the internet and it's like telling you, oh, just simply replace your mortgage with the line of credit because loans bad, lines of credit good, and loan interest is calculated differently from line of credit interest. So I'm going to dispel that myth because the way that loans and lines of credit interest is practically the same, right? Like the myth is that they're somehow completely different, but they're practically the same. And the reason why loan interest, um, the rates are usually lower than line of credit. Think of it in terms of like software features. If you get the free version of a software, you might get limited access to that software. Whereas if you get the paid version, you can use that software whenever you want. It's the same thing with loans and lines of credit. If you have a like a 3% interest rate loan, um, the reason why it's so cheap is because uh, if you ever try to overpay that loan directly, you can't get that money back, right? Um, and, and this is very powerful because we have to think about human behavior and psychology. So if you knew that you overpaid something, even if it's a debt and you could never have access to that money back, um, you're not going to overpay it, right? And this is why um, things that should take 30 years theoretically, like a 30-year mortgage, become a 52-year mortgage because of refinancing, because you get a letter from the bank saying, hey, you get a lower monthly payment because of your cash flow issues and your desire to have savings, right? And so a line of credit it's going to have higher interest rates because you have that two-way access, right? You can access your money whenever you want. Now, the goal is to get the best of both worlds where we're not paying as much interest and we have complete access to our cash, right? And if you've ever seen any of these velocity banking demonstrations, you'll understand that, and I've never seen an exception to this, that the mortgage is paid off last. So when people talk about like paying off the mortgage, I actually feel like, the benefits of velocity banking are kind of exaggerated by other people on the internet when in reality, um, you know, whether you're doing extra payments or chunky, it's the same thing. It's just a matter of are you actually going to do it or not? And so the reason why I recommend, you know, I personally would do chunking, maybe I might not recommend for you again, to see a financial professional, is that uh, if you, let's say, transfer, let's say, $5,000 to your, let's say you have $10,000 in savings, right? So the first thing I would do is just transfer $10,000 of savings to that loan. And then uh, let's say you have a line of credit available. Um, at the very last moment, since I've already transferred that 10K of savings, then I might chunk 5K, right? So if I chunk 5K, then I make it much easier for me to incentivize putting my entire paycheck in and essentially overpay that line of credit while, let's say, paying off the loan, Right. So why am I talking about this? Because, again, people say things like, oh, loans have amortized interest and lines of credit have simple interest when they both work off of simple interest. Folks, there's only simple and compound interest, right? And they really usually refer to growth accounts like annuities and stuff like that. Um, the reason why, let's say, debt would have be compound interest is because you made late payments. And so the way that that would work is you, you interest accrued for one month. And then you, you didn't make the payment, so you go to the next month, and then the interest accrued on top of interest, right? Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, just realize that the loan and the line of credit interest are mostly calculated the same. So the formula that we're going to go over is to, and we're actually do some real-life calculations, loan interest is the statement balance times the interest rate divided by 12, right? And the interest rate is the annual interest rate APR. And the funny thing is, is that, in the two loans that I have, I pay them 11 days late because it says in the contract there's no uh, penalty uh, for paying up to 15 days late. So I was like, all right, well, I don't want to do you know wait until the last minute from um, day 15 after the due date, but I'll do it on day 11, right? So I kind of delay <laughs> uh, the paying the loan after the due date, and it the the loan interest calculates exactly the same. So. Um, for me personally, I, I would just I, I pay it as late as possible because again, it's by the statement balance divided times the interest rate divided by twelve. Now the line of credit interest is a little bit different because it's based on the average daily balance times the interest rate divided by twelve. 
Now, you can argue that for the loan, the average daily bounce is essentially a statement bounce because it's not revolving. You make a payment like 95 or 97 percent of Americans, they make a payment and then they just forget about it. And, and it's the same balance for most of the month. Right. So you could argue that the average daily balance and the statement balance for the most part are the same in the loan and line of credit interest. So we'll go over an example here. Um, so you have the principal balance, the loan balance, the interest rate. And if you want us to calculate what the interest payment would be, again, this times this divided by 12, and it should be 404.48, right? So let's go ahead and uh, calculate this, okay? So give me one moment. All right. So again, let's let's just do this here. Let me clear this. All right. So 168828.25, that's the loan balance, minus the interest rate, which is... Um, 0 0.02875 and then we divide it by 12 to get the monthly interest. And then as you can see, we have 404.48, right? 404.48. And then that's what we have down here, okay? So that's what we have down here on the interest payment. And the way that they get the principal is you get the regular payment minus the interest and that'll show you your principal. So you see how easy that was? Statement balance times the interest rate divided by 12, okay? Now, line of credit, they because it's revolving, they, ha they, they have the average daily balance, and what they do is that at the end of every day, they know what the balance is. They add them all up for every single day and then divide it by the number of days in the month, right? So here we have an example of a line of credit. Um, again, I'm practic practicing velocity banking here where I put the entire payment into the line of credit, take out expenses, and then we have a periodic finance charge and so you have a new balance here about 10 grand, even though we started off 28 grand on the previous month. And then you can see here the average daily balance, the monthly rate, and then the annual rate, and then the actual amount that was charged. Now, again, if you want to see the actual calculation, um, it's, it's relatively easy, okay? So what you got to do, and let me move this. Um, hold on. All right. So what you do is you take that daily average daily balance on the left, so 12473.83, multiply um, the monthly periodic rate, and then that'll give you the um, the what's it called, the the amount charged for financing or the the uh, interest, the line of credit interest. Now, the way that it actually works is you take this number and you divide by 12, or the corresponding annual percentage rate, and then you divide by 12. So Let's go ahead and multiply it by the corresponding annual percentage rate. One, hold on, 0 0.10375. Okay, and then you divide by 12, and then you'll see. So let's go ahead and move this. So we on our calculator, it's 107.846, and let's see what we get here. 107.84. See how that works? Again, pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, except it's based on the number of days in the billing cycle and the average daily balance, right? So the way that they get the average daily balance is they add up the balance of every single day and then divide it by 31, and they multiply by the interest rate and divide by 12 to get that monthly periodic rate. And again, same exact thing, right? So I think it's a little bit misleading to say, oh, loans bad, lines of credit good. They have our uses, but when we're doing velocity banking, the line of credit allows us so much more flexibility in overpaying even low interest rate loans where it's practically the same to do extra pay like as doing extra payments but it gives you let's say um, the ability to maintain control of your money much much easier than directly overpaying a loan and how do I know this because most people never overpay their loans the system knows that which is why it can get a lot of people to refinance when they shouldn't be doing that right again this isn't general I'm sorry, this isn't financial advice for you. This is just some general observations. So <laughs> so let's just kind of go over quickly about the word amortization. So all amortization is is that after a certain number of payments, the loan is going to go to zero, right? So if it's amortized for 30 years with a certain interest rate, it just means exactly after 30 years, the, the loan balance is going to go to zero. Same thing with like 10-year amortization, right? So if it's amortized for 10 years, it just means exactly after 10 years, the loan balance will, will go to zero, right? And so, you know, people say things like, oh, amortized loans means you pay a lot of interest. 
That's actually not true because let's say I deal with one year amortization of this $200,000 loan. After one year, the, the balance of the loan is gone. Uh, but how much interest did I pay? It's $6,500. But we have to understand um, when we change the loan term, uh, and that's the only thing we change, everything else is, is the same. The, this incre like the lower the term, the, the higher the monthly payment, right? And the, but the lower the interest, okay? So everything is a, it, if we change the term, it's a trade off between cash flow versus the amount of interest that you pay. So here, if we do one year, I might be in negative cash flow, but I pay off this, you know, I don't pay as much interest, right? Uh, but let's say we do it 30 years, the payment is going to go down or the monthly payment, but the interest is going to go up 231,000, right? So we have to understand that inverse relationship, but understand that amortization does not mean you pay a lot. Amortization means that it's fixed after a certain number of payments, the loan goes to zero, right? That's what amortization means. But we have to understand that the longer the period, you know, I heard there are even 40 year mortgage nowadays, but the longer the period, the lower the payment, but the more interest that we collect, which is what um, uh, mortgage payment collectors or note collectors uh, are interested in, in the interest, right? So <laughs> so that's really the only difference between the loan and the line of credit. They're, they're, they're not completely different. They're calculated the same, but we have to understand uh, why a loan is priced lower than a line of credit, right? And the features, and we're basically... Uh, want, and we, you know, when we're at the point where the mortgage is our last debt, yes, we can use a line of credit to pay it. And the reason why we might want to pay it is because it's an easy way to overpay it, right? That That's essentially what chunking would be, is that it's a very easy way to overpay our loan without having to um, sacrifice, you know, dumping all of our, our cash into that loan itself, right? Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, this is a uh, Korean Atlanta mentorship. So just another video for today regarding uh, quote myths about velocity banking. And the number one myth that I consider about velocity banking is that you should replace all loans with lines of credit, which is not correct, right? We have to understand and evaluate the, the, the situation at hand and do a couple of comparisons and realize that there's going to always going to be trade-offs no matter what you do, right? People are looking for this unicorn situation where you have low interest rates, complete access to your money, and then, I don't know, maybe, maybe um, I don't even know, but they're, they're looking for unicorns, right? And, and that doesn't exist, all right? Well, this is Korean Atlanta Mentorship. Have a great day, and we'll speak next time.